again, I'm Amelia, and this is my little sister Talia, who is again holding Leonardo da Vinci, our friend the giant hairy scorpion. Hi everyone! Welcome to Critter Ed TV Episode 2, where today we will be learning about the Arizona Bark Scorpion, another one of the most misunderstood critters on Earth. Hello and welcome back to Critter Ed TV, coming to you from the Tankaberti Therapeutic Zoo here in beautiful Tucson, Arizona. I'm your host, Jet Dodds, and of course I'm here with Clint Elliott, our co-creator of the Tankaberti Therapeutic Zoo model. Uh, Clint, in the first episode we went over the giant hairy scorpion and how a lifetime of misinformation has led people to believe that this animal is a danger, where in reality they pose little to no threat to humans. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be going over a species that does account for thousands of non-lethal stings in Arizona, which is the Arizona bark scorpion. Yes, as well as introduce another non-lethal species of scorpion, the striped devil. When you're finished watching this show, you're never going to mistake a common species of scorpion for another again. And knowing the difference between each species of scorpion is so important. So often, scorpions are needlessly killed, and it's rarely necessary. In fact, scorpions play a vital role in the communities they live in, keeping them safe and healthy. Yeah, it's so much for us to get to, but first I want to remind you what our missions here at the Tankaberti Therapeutic Zoo and Critter Ed TV are. And mission number one is... To educate the public about wild and domestic animals in a truthful way that eases fear instead of creates it. Right, and mission two? It's to provide free animal interactions to low income and special needs individuals by a scholarship program with money generated through this channel. And by far the two most important things you can do to help us achieve those goals is to subscribe to this channel and share this and all of our future videos with your friends and family. Now Clint, this being our second episode, do you think it's too much to ask our viewers to do one extra thing? I don't think it's too much. Please comment in the comment section below. Clint's absolutely right. By commenting in the section below, it allows us to reach our next goal. We want to hear what you guys are thinking. What do you want to see? What do you like? And that's going to really help us to be able to develop this channel. Yeah, I think we've yapped enough. Let's go see Amelia and Talia and meet some more very misunderstood scorpions. Let's do it. Hi, Talia. Hi, Amelia. Hi, Jed. So your dad has brought back Leonardo da Vinci, the giant hairy scorpion. Who you should never be afraid of after episode one. Absolutely. After learning so much from you girls in episode one about how amazing giant hairy scorpions are, nobody should be afraid of them. And there's still more to learn before we get to the Arizona bark scorpion and the striped tail. Like, where exactly does Mr. da Vinci live? Now, we know they live in the Sonoran Desert here in Arizona and other southwestern locations, but let's get a little bit more specific. Uh, Talia, can you tell us what a biome is? A biome is a large habitat where plants and animals live, like a whole desert or an entire ocean. That's absolutely correct. And Amelia, can you tell us what an ecosystem is? An ecosystem is a smaller part of that biome where plants and animals interact. That's exactly right. Also, the two are very different. A biome is big in general, like the Sonoran Desert here in Arizona. And a desert biome has several different eco ecosystems that support different plants and animals. So, Talia, can you tell us what ecosystem a giant hairy scorpion likes to live in? They live in saguaro forests or in wash valleys where not a lot of houses are. Right. For those who don't know, saguaro forests are mostly undeveloped areas of the Sonoran Desert where huge numbers of the iconic saguaro cacti grow. Saguaros don't get their first arm until they're 100 years old, so these forests have been undisturbed for a long time. Amelia, what are wash valleys and why are they mostly untouched by human development? Wash valleys are riverbeds that are dry some of the year, but flood when it rains or snow melts up in the mountains. And can houses be built where it floods? That would be very bad. So giant hairy scorpions like to live in places that people aren't. And that explains why people don't often see them, even though they're a really common species. Uh, so Clint, when we find a giant hairy scorpion, a wild one here on the ranch, and we try to pick one up, we know they're not aggressive when they're in the hand, but uh, how, how do we pick one up safely? Well, how about if I put Leonardo on the ground and demonstrate? That would be perfect. So when you find a giant hairy scorpion on the ground, the safest way to pick it up is to place one hand in front of it with your palm up while using your second hand to try and guide him in the direction of this hand. Let's get the debris out of the way. And to get him to climb up onto 
the hand that is down. There you go. And once you have him, he'll grip your hand and you go into your hand under hand technique to keep the scorpion and yourself safe. We hope you enjoyed that live demonstration on how to properly pick up a giant hairy scorpion. But it still begs the question why so many YouTubers portray these animals as being aggressive towards humans when clearly they're not. Uh, Talia, what's one big problem that YouTubers do to improperly pick up a giant hairy scorpion? Ugh, this one makes me so mad. They pick them up by their tail, either with their fingers or with tweezers. Yeah, that makes me so mad also. I mean, how would you like it if some big giant comes and grabs your legs and lifts you up? You wouldn't like that at all, would you? No. no. And I have something to say to people who use tweezers or tongs to pick up hairy scorpions by the tail. Uh, please don't. Uh, no matter how careful you're being, uh, you can't control how much pressure you put on that animal's tail, and you will damage its venom sac. If you think about the venom sac as its lifeline, it's how it eats, it's how it, it's how it gets its food. So if you damage it, it will die and slowly. So please learn how to handle scorpions like we do, or don't do it at all. Yeah, and the best thing to do is probably just not to do it. If you find a scorpion yeah. in the wild, the best thing to do is to leave it alone. Um, don't try to pick it up unless you're using it for an educational purpose like what we're doing. Uh, we're trying to properly relocate it. Uh, just leave it there and leave it be. That's going to be the best thing for you and for the scorpions. Now, Amelia, there's another big problem or big thing that people do wrong when they're working with giant hairy scorpions. Um, what, what is that? They shine a really bright light onto them, and the scorpions don't like light, which is why we always put them in the shade whenever we bring them outside. That's right. Scorpions are nocturnal, and they have special sensory organs that are designed for them to operate at nighttime. And when you shine a bright light on someone, I mean, that could be really hard and can damage all those sensory organs. So now we've learned a lot of the improper ways to handle a giant hairy scorpion, uh, why that's wrong, and how dangerous it can be for the scorpion. But let's talk about some of the great things that scorpions do for our environment. Environment. And one of those is what they eat. Uh, scorpions love to eat soft-bodied insects and their favorite food is cockroaches. That's right. It's cockroaches. Now, if you don't like cockroaches, you're going to love scorpions, but we don't want either in our house. So now let's learn how to seal it up. Girls, I know you guys have some great ways on how to seal up a house. Why don't we go and take a look? Yeah, sure. let's go. Let's do it. All right, Amelia, we are here at the window, which is a common place for scorpions to get into the house. Now, we know the giant hairy scorpion's not coming in through this way because they don't climb, but a bark scorpion definitely can. So what's one tip that our viewers at home can do to help prevent scorpions getting in through the window? Well, as you said, they do get in through the window with cracks underneath it. And so what we do is we have this handy-dandy little tool called a caulking gun that creates a line of silicone that seals up your house from scorpions getting in. Well, that's some great advice to seal up your window. Now let's go over to Talia, who's at the front door, with another tip on how to prevent him coming in that way. So we just learned a great way to be able to prevent scorpions from coming in through the window by using caulking. And now we're at the front door. Uh, Talia, what do you have? Weather stripping. And how can weather stripping help prevent scorpions to get into the house? By putting it on the door, it creates a barrier so scorpions can't get in. That's exactly right. These are great ways to be able to seal up your house to prevent scorpions from coming in. So now, we've been talking all about the Arizona bark scorpion. I think it's time to learn a little bit more about that. Let's go learn more about the Arizona bark scorpion. Yeah, sure. Hi, Clint. I see that you have the infamous Arizona bark scorpion and you are handling it. I am. And this is an adult. It's about two inches long. They don't get much bigger than this. And uh, a free hand up close demonstration is really the only way that I can convince people that uh, these scorpions, the Arizona bark scorpion, is not out to sting you. Uh, all stings are accidental. And uh, if I were to get stung, it's because I'm handling it in the absolute wrong manner. Now you definitely know what you're doing, but what sort of training uh, do you recommend somebody have before they do this? Oh, DEF CON 5. Uh, honestly, just don't do it unless you are an expert and have a lot of experience with these animals. And now I see that you're using the palm frond, which is different than the hand over a hand that we are using with the giant hairy. Yes, as you can see, the bark scorpion moves extremely quickly and uh, very easy to mess up your technique. You want to provide it a place to walk freely without placing something in front of it like your hand. You want it to be an inanimate object, but you want to do it in a way that isn't aggressive or is going to make the scorpion uh, defensive in any way, because these scorpions will be quick to sting uh, if you don't handle them properly. 
Still it knows you're a living creature and not another piece of frond, and it still isn't interested in stinging you. And it never will if I don't give it a reason. So stings are pretty rare. I mean, case in point, we've had zero sting deaths from an Arizona bark scorpion in decades in Arizona, and only two since the 1960s. Um, so, I mean, there's really not a reason to be scared of these guys. As you can see, the differences between these two types of scorpions is more than behavioral. The giant hairy is the largest scorpion in America at up to six inches long, while the bark is only around two inches, and its shape is far more slender. The color is also quite different. Harry's have a darker back and sparse red hairs all over its claws and tail, while Barks are more yellowish and have no visible hair. So, with just a little bit of knowledge, you will never mistake one type of scorpion for the other again. And that's important, because the strength of the venom between these two scorpions is significant. And if you've heard the saying, when it comes to scorpions, the bigger is better, well this is what that saying refers to. The giant hairy has weak venom, while the bark has the most potent venom of any scorpion in North America. It's rarely life-threatening, but a sting can hurt for multiple days and cause a variety of reactions like numbness, difficulty breathing, and muscle twitching, especially in young children. So Clint, we've learned so much about the Arizona bark scorpion and the giant hairy scorpion, but we still have one more species to go. Uh, what is that one? Well, it's the most common species of scorpion we find here at the ranch, and it's called the striped devil or the striped tail scorpion. And at two and three quarters inches in total length, the striped devil is far smaller than the giant hairy scorpion and lacks the plentiful red hairs that differentiate the giant hairy from other common scorpions. Although the striped devil does have fewer and much smaller hairs that you can see in this incredible shot. Another way to identify the striped devil is by the bold black stripes that run vertically along the base of its tail. But what about the venom potency compared to the giant hairy and bark scorpion? Like the giant hairy scorpion, the striped devil is not considered a dangerous species to humans. They are not aggressive stingers, and there hasn't been a single death attributed to this harmless scorpion. But remember, anyone can develop an allergy to venom, so leave the handling of the scorpion to those with the knowledge and experience to stay safe. We hope you enjoyed learning all about scorpions, especially the ecosystems where they live and how to seal up your house so that they don't get in and learning the characteristics of the three common species so you always know how to tell them apart. And we're hoping by you knowing all this information, you'll truly be able to appreciate how amazing scorpions are. That's going to do it for this episode on Critter Ed TV, where fear becomes wonder and wonder becomes passion. Bye! Bye. Bye.